Hello and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft video. I am Paul Chion and we are straight into this pack. We have Mystic Confluence, Thoughtseize, Inti, Ancient Tomb, and perhaps Sneak Attack if that's something that we want to do. So a lot of great options in this pack. I've drafted a few aggro decks recently, so I'm not looking at the Inti necessarily. So I'm looking at uh, Ancient Tomb, Thoughtseize, or Mystic Confluence. I do like both of these cards. I think I prefer the Thoughtseize over the Confluence. So let's go ahead and take the Thoughtseize here. When in doubt, take the cheaper card. That's kind of how I've been drafting recently. And it's been doing better, surprisingly. Mystic Confluence is totally the type of card that I want to play. But um, again, I've just been having a lot more success, just lowering my curve a significant amount. So this pack is also quite good. We have Pest Infestation, Mana Leak, and Dismember. So Mana Leak is good, but so is Dismember, and Dismember keeps us base black, and we don't necessarily have to commit to a second color, and I just do like it as a removal spell. Pest Infestation is also okay, so that's also something that you, you could consider taking. Hmm, do I take Pest Infestation? I do really like the card. You know what? I'm going to take Pest Infestation over this member. I think this card is quite strong and I'm going to take it over the Mana Leak despite Mana Leak being something that I've historically really, really loved. This pack gives us Swords to Plowshares, Chrome Mox, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Oh my. A mid-range player's delight. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is a fantastic card. I think I'm going to take it here over the Chrome Mox. There's also Grief in the pack. If I knew I was going to be Reanimator, Grief would be really nice with the Thoughtseize. But I think Fable is enough better where I'm going to take that. And I do like it over Swords. Swords is a premium removal spell, but I'd rather draft around Fable because it looks like we're drafting some kind of a mid-range strategy here. We'll see how it goes. But nice start. Don't have quite the mana situation uh, set up here, but Thoughtseize, Fable, and Pest Infestation certainly all very, very powerful cards. Here we have Council Judgment and Cryptic Command if you wanted to do the blue-white thing or Daze perhaps. But for us, we are really truly just considering Snuff Out versus Fire Covenant. Those are the two options here. And I'm not entirely sure which one is better. They're both very good. I think I prefer... This is close, but I think I prefer Fiery Covenant. I think this leads to more potential blowouts. So I'll just take the Fire Covenant here and we're looking like perhaps a black red base with maybe a light touch of green here for the pest infestation. This pack has a deep cavern bat if we want just some cheap interaction against what our opponents are trying to do. There's exhum if I wanted to go down the reanimation angle. And then there's also glory bringer which is just a nice dragon to have at the top of your curve. I think I still just value having cheap interaction in this type of deck. So I'm going to take the Deep Cavern Bat here over the Glory Bringer. Now if the Exhum was a stronger reanimation spell, I would have taken it. Something like an Animate Dead. But Exhum, again, there's downside because your opponents could also have good things to put into their graveyard. So starting out here with a decent Racto strategy. And then of course now we see the Gristle Brand. That is a late Gristle Brand. We're going to take it and see if we can find some other reanimate spells and ways to put cards into the graveyard. But when you see a Gristle Brand this late, it's probably a sign. I mean, the Exhum could have also been a sign, but the Gristle Brand is very nice. This is an interesting pack. So we have Him to Turok, which is a generically good card. Bone Crusher Giant, also a generically good card. But then there's Bone Shards, which is good if I have ways to discard. So which direction do I want to go? Hmm. I am a sucker for him to Turok. I really do love that card. I also do like Bone Crusher Giant. I think in black red though, I should have enough removal. And I'm a big fan of him. So I'm going to just take him to Turok just because I think it's an extremely powerful spell. I just need to be mindful of my mana if I do. Here, don't. I think I'm going to take the Stomping Ground. It's just an excellent card with this Pest Infestation that we still want to splash. Firebolt is also fine. Molten Collapse is also fine, but again, I want to splash the Pest Infestation, so I want to put the Stomping Ground into my deck. And now, nothing really in Black-Red. We could perhaps take a Tarmogoyf or an Evolved Sleeper. It's between the two of those cards. 
Not interested in Malcolm. I know it helps us loot for the Gristle brand, but what do I want to take between these two? Tarmogoy can just randomly be big. We do have Thoughtseize and him to Turok. But if we're going to be heavy black, maybe the Evolve Sleeper is better. So yeah, I'll go with the Evolve Sleeper, even though I do like me a Tarmogoy. Here we have the option between Shieldred's Edict and a Delayed Blast Fireball. There's also Tenacious Underdog, which is an okay threat to play early. But I do like Shieldred's Edict. I think a lot of people are also pretty high on the Fireball, but I do like the Edict. I like the fact that it's a two-mana card that can potentially kill Planeswalkers. Here I'm going to take... I suppose... I'm not a big fan of the Dragon Engine, so I guess I'll take the Revoker. Could have some functionalities as a sideboard card. This isn't especially... This isn't really looking like a Prism deck. And now... The one thing here is that our mana isn't great. I will take a Vendicate probably over the Ferocidon though, just because this doesn't look like the type of deck where I'm going to want to play the Ferocidon. Oh, but here, happy to see that Glorybringer table. So this looks like it's setting up to be a reasonable black-red mid-range strategy. We have both Thoughtseize and him to Turok, Deep Cavern Bat as ways to interact, Shieldra's Edict and Fire Covenant and Glorybringer as removal effects, and a Pest Infestation to potentially splash. So the Exhumed didn't table. I don't know if there were enough cards for it to table. But we have a Gristlebrand here. It's still possible that we play it. And there's a Baleful Mastery. Uh, this card is just okay. If I'm looking to be kind of a mid-range strategy, I don't really like the idea of giving my opponent a card. And if that's not the case, I know there's flexibility here, but for four mana... Do I want to sp spend 4 mana to kill something? If I need the removal spell, I'll play it, but generally I prefer playing other removal effects over a card like the Baleful Mastery. And what do we have in this pack? That's a Mox Jet. That is a Mox Jet, and I'm very happy to take the Mox Jet out of this pack. Reanimation targets, notably there's an Atali Primal Conqueror. There's a Tinker in this pack, but we are nowhere close. We have zero artifacts and no big artifacts. So, but somebody getting the Tinker will be very happy. And then there's a troll of Kazadun. Kaz Kazadun. Um, that could possibly be playable here, especially if we can pick up something like a Blood Crypt out of uh, one of these packs or Badlands. But very, very happy with Mox Jet. Extremely happy with Mox Jet. And probably, probably my favorite card in the cube, to be honest. That's Minskin Boo. We're taking Minskin Boo. Nothing else out of this pack. This is the best Planeswalker, in my opinion, in the current Magic Online cube. And I'm going to slam Minsk and Boo and put it into my deck. We have the Stomping Ground. We're still looking for a little bit more fixing to try to get this to work. Fable helps a little bit. We have a Stomping Ground, but Raging Ravine. Obviously, the Jund Triome would be great. Fetchlands, etc. So, definitely keeping an eye out. But I will say it does feel like there has been kind of a lack of lands in these packs. So somebody might be trying to do five color shenanigans and just taking every land that they see. And this pack is awful. There is a Scrapwork Mutt to maybe discard Gristlebrand. Now keep in mind, we don't have any reanimation spells. So I'm going to just take Blooming Marsh out of this pack. There's no real black and red card that I think is great for our strategy. And Blooming Marsh does give us one more green source to play Minskin Boo and Pest Infestation. And now what are we looking at? What are we looking at? There is a Territorial Kavu, which is a card I typically like, but we don't have kind of the mana base to support it or have it be to have it be good. So now we have the choice between Vampiric Tutor, which tends to be a little bit better if you are looking to be a bit more unfair. I might still take it if we do end up maybe perhaps down the reanimation rabbit hole. There's not a whole lot I'm missing out on by taking it either. Outland Liberator on the splash doesn't look great. There's a Kari Zev that I can, I guess, maybe take play turn two. But we're not aggressive enough where I think Kari Zev is going to be fantastic. And then there's also Collective Brutality, which is okay in reanimation strategies. But let's just take this Vampiric Tutor, kind of put it off to the side here, and see where this goes. Now we have the choice between Batter Skull, Savai Triome, and Chain Lightning. Savai Triome acts as a black, red, white land which is quite nice. We don't need the white mana necessarily, but having this means that the troll, if it tables, gives us a black red mana source. However, I'm a sucker for chain lightning too. Chain lightning is great, but I'm black red. I think I'm going to have enough removal. 
And we do need mana fixing. I'm going to take the Triome over the Chain Lightning out of this pack. It hurts. It hurts me. It hurts me dearly. But I think it's it's going to be good. And and now if my mana works, Tireless Tracker is a phenomenal mid-range creature to play. I like it much better than something like a Misery Shadow or a Goblin Welder. So we'll spec on the Tracker. And if our mana becomes good enough, I can certainly play the Tracker in my deck. Here we have the option between Umizawa's Jite and Terra Sunder. Questing Beast is probably just a little bit too tough. I'm going to take the GTA just because it's colorless. We're going to have enough creatures probably to equip. And if we're going lighter on the green, then I would rather just not play the Terran Sunder if I don't have to. And GTA is just a good card to play. So let's take the GTA. Oh, my favorite, my favorite dragon. My favorite dragon. I'm going to take it here. There is a Raging Ravine. Wow, and that's a Solitude too. But hey, the Goldspan Dragon also helps you fix. And... As much as I like the Ravine, I love me a Goldspan Dragon. So I'm going to take it out of that pack. Here we have a Fire Ice which and a Coalition Relic. I don't, I'm not really interested in playing Fire Ice if I can't Ice. So maybe I just take the Relic? Yeah, maybe I'll just take the Relic here just to help me with my mana. Doesn't look like Reanimation is a thing. And I'm actually pretty happy picking up this Damnation out of this pack. So we'll take that. Um... Can possibly even play it. It is a nice card to pair with something like a Vampiric Tutor. Take an Ember Cleave out of a pack which doesn't have much of anything else. And whew, uh, Soul of Windgrace doesn't do much. Territorial Kavu on the Splash or Kari Zev. I'll take the Kari Zev. I'll take the Kari Zev just because it's a two drop that I can play pretty reliably but might not play that as well. We'll take the Batter Skull here. Um... If we get, I don't know, if we get a Stoneforge Mystic or something, maybe, and good enough mana, maybe we can play it. Escape to the Wilds might be a sideboard card for the grindy matchups. But this is kind of what we have so far. Looking okay. I wouldn't say, it's, I wouldn't say that it's phenomenal. Wow, there is a fourth year Lingus. There is a Razor Ridge Thicket here. Fourth year Lingus is phenomenal. There is a Misty Rainforest, but it actually gets... So Misty Rainforest gets us Stomping Ground. But it doesn't get us the Savai Triumph. So it's just an extra Stomping Ground, which isn't bad. But I think fourth year Lingus is so good, and we have some ways to make treasure, that it's worth taking and then just figuring out our mana afterwards. I'm, gl I'm glad I took that Razor Verge Thicket, though. But yeah, we took the fourth year Lingus here, and let's now... Focus on making sure that the mana base works out here. There's an Underworld Breach, which isn't fantastic. I don't think I'm doing this. Uh, I don't think I'm doing the Gristlebrand thing. There is a Duress, which is just a great hand disruption effect. But there's also a Concealed Courtyard. But I think Concealed Courtyard is likely to table. So I'm going to take Duress because in, these, in, the, in, in this strategy, it's really important to have cheap interaction. So whenever I see cards like Thoughtseize and Duress... For me, they're premium cards to pick up. Now I think we take Plateau. It gets us a red and white source, which is quite nice. There's also Godless Shrine. There's a Coligan's Command in this pack, but I think at this point, we just want to take... This is, I think, a decent point to take mana. And it's close. I mean, this one is just better, right? It just gets me the white. Excuse me, it, it, it just, I don't take damage to do so. The other option here is Coligan's Command, but yeah, I'm taking Plateau out of this pack just to uh, make sure that I can play the fourth Eerlingus. And now I'll take a Restless Bivouac. Yeah, we'll take the Restless Bivouac here just to give us another white source, and that gives us a total of four white sources in our deck, which is more than enough for the fourth Eerlingus. There's also a Blood Tide Harvester in this pack. But I'm taking the Restless Bivouac. Okay, ooh, Blood Crypt. I mean, it's got to be Blood Crypt. There is a Watery Grave, but we're not playing blue. There's a Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is also very nice. But Blood Crypt seems very, very good in this deck, and it just helps us with the mana. And again, I think we're going to end up with enough playables here. So I'm just really, really focusing on making sure I have a rock-solid mana base here. Now we have the choice between Currency Converter, which is not especially good if you're not reanimating... And we don't have a lot of ways to cycle or discard. I guess we have Fable of the Mirror Breaker. 
So I don't know if that's something that I'm interested in, but I do want cheap interaction. And because of that, I'm going to take the Flame Slash out of this pack just to have some cheap removal to play. Ooh, there's a Badlands in this pack and an Oliphant. Okay, so we picked up a Blood Crypt. We picked up a Blood Crypt already. That's, that's a late Palace Shaler, by the way. The Oliphant gets us red, white, black, and green. It, it gets us all four colors. I think that makes the Oliphant the pick here over the Badlands because we already took the, the Blood Crypt. We have Blood Crypt and Plateau here and Stomping Ground. Oh yeah, this gets us four sources of untapped color, any color that we want. So pretty happy with the Oliphant here. And now we have the option between a Renin 6, which does basically nothing, a Doretti, which also does basically nothing, and I don't want a blue card. I'm not through the breaching. Maybe a Contagion? I guess we can take a Contagion for the sideboard. Nothing else looks all that appealing. I don't care about Touch, touch of the Spirit Realm. Um, so we'll take the Contagion there. Now we're looking at a pack, okay, we're looking at Ophiomancer, Rampaging Raptor, and Inferno Titan. What do I want here? I think I have enough top end stuff here, so I'm looking to take something a little bit lower on, lower in my mana curve. The question is, do I like Ophiomancer better or worse than the Rampaging Raptor? I kind of like the Raptor, to be honest, so I'm going to take it. I think it just gets in for a good chunk of damage. So I'm going to take that, and here I'm going to take the Courtyard just for a little bit more white mana. Now we, okay, now I can take the Culligan's Command because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the Oliphant. I don't need the Godless Shrine anymore, so let's take the K Command, which is just a great spell to play. And now there's a Blood Tithe Harvester. Happy enough with that as well, just a solid creature to play in your deck. Probably not Batter Sculling, would hate to cast Relic. It's possible we even play the Vindicate if our mana is good enough, if we just need an extra removal spell here. So, looking like we're basically just kind of a black, ray, black red base deck, splashing green for these three cards probably, and the fourth year Lingus. Alright, so this is 21 cards. Ooh! And I do like me a Virtue of Persistence, perfect for this mid-range strategy. I do think I like it more than Flame Tongue Kavu. So that's, that's also a great addition. I'm not sure I want a Vampiric Tutor here, but we do have 4th year Lingus and Minskin Boo and potentially Damnation. So maybe it's worth. And the Currency Converter tabled. Alright, well, I think I can play it now, right? I mean, I have... Oh, Pyrokinesis too? Does that make the main deck? Maybe? All right, let's uh, put all the mana sources here off to the side. We'll put it up here, and then this is what we're looking at. Remember, Baleful Mastery and Vindicate can still be considerations. I don't think I like the Relic. It just doesn't do anything. Kind of want to curve out. And then this is kind of what our deck looks like. And we need to cut, I guess, at least two cards from here. Okay, so this doesn't seem like a great Kari Zev deck. We can cut that. I like the other creatures here. I wonder if the Ophiomancer was better. We'll put this up here, put this up here, and then like fourth year Lingus is somewhere around there. The Pest of Infestation is kind of like a three mana card. And I think we have enough creatures here to still make GTA reasonable. And let's take a look at our white situation. One, two, three, four, five white sources to go along with um, the Oliphant, which can go get us a Plateau. So that's, that's a total of six white sources for the fourth year Lingus. So looking great there. I mean, if anything, Vindicate's also a possible card to play. Okay, I think these cards can come out of the sideboard. I still like the idea of playing Vamp because I think... I'm cutting these because I can still vamp for the Fire Covenant as kind of a, a sweeper effect, but then I can still look to get Minskin Boo or Fourth Year Lingus, and those are the two best cards in my deck, and I think having an extra copy is pretty good. Typically not the kind of card that you want in a fair deck, but these are probably worth it to play. And then 
Damnation and Pyrokinesis are excellent sideboard cards. And I guess this can kind of attack. So maybe then I just play a Kari Zev here as just a beater. We do have the Raptor here too. And then just figure out our mana afterwards. There are some extra removal spells if we need. But it's either basically like Kari Zev or Vamp versus one of these cards. But we'll try this. We'll try this and let's just put all the lands in here. Sort by color, combine groups, and figure out our sources. We don't need any planes. And we got to figure out our green situation. We have Bloomy Marsh, Rest, uh, Razor Verge Thicket, so that's two. Stomping Ground, that's three. And then we have Only Font, that's four. Probably want one forest here. And then we have no planes. And then let's look at our uh, red sources. We have one, two, three, four, five. Plus the Oliphant, that's six. So three mountains make sense. That gives us nine red. And then maybe three swamps as well. So this gives us one, two, three, four, five. Oliphant gives us six black. And then seven, eight, nine. So this gives us a nine, nine, five. And the white is basically free mana base. And I think I'm okay with that. You know, I can even consider playing another swamp because... No, we have a bunch of double reds as well. So I would like a little bit more black for the Him to Turok. But I think given that we have a lot of these other red things that we want to do early, this is about the best distribution we can go with here. Okay, round number one underway here. We have the tap land. So the triome is nice. It just gives us all the mana that we need. A little bit not ideal with that evolved sleeper in our hand because we can't play a swamp turn one, but... Still happy with this. You know, it'd be nice. Turn one Mox Jet. Just Mox Jet off the top. Ooh, Bloodstained Mire would be so nice in our deck. I don't think we saw we had that many opportunities at fetch lands, though. I think people know how great they are. Let's see. If we draw a black source, we can go Duress Evolve Sleeper. But if not, we can also just go Land Deep Cavern Bat. A lot of options. We also have the Flame Slash here. So they went to... Oh, Zyator's Proving Ground would be phenomenal. Looks like it's a... Is it a Jund Mirror? That's exciting. Or am I one of the few people that gets excited about a Jund Mirror in Vintage Cube? Well, here we are. Here we are. Oh, there's a... That's a Bivouac. Huh. Is it just duress instead then? Let's just let's just duress then. We can't GTA equip until turn four anyways. And they probably have a removal spell if they're Jund. Oh wow. wait, they didn't cast Demonic Tutor? They have an Emrakul in their hand? Why didn't they cast Demonic Tutor? Did they not want to Okay, I guess they're waiting to for what anyways. Anyways, I'm taking Demonic Tutor. <laughs> They do have a reanimate, something to be mindful of. But that is their hand. So they're trying to do some unfair things with the green base, though. We have a gold span dragon, okay. Um, don't really need to deep cavern bat here. So I'm kind of interested in just playing the evolve sleeper. I'm playing a Jite and just using every bit of my mana this turn. If they play land number four, though, I am probably very interested in playing the Bat and getting the Nissa. So that's a Wall of Roots, so they are getting closer. Oh, this is this is pretty cool. I wonder if they'll do it. Unta like a land would just be great. Th but Oh, Blooming Marsh, that's not ideal. So, so I really want to bat away the Nissa. But another thing is, if I equip the Jite, I can't kill the Wall of Roots, right? But what I can do is attack with Evolve Sleeper. If they block, then I can Flame Slash the Wall of Roots and then play Deep Cavern Bat. Let's see what they do. They might just take one. Like, if you need the mana really badly, they're probably going, why are, why are they doing this? Yeah, alright, they took the one. So, Heads up play from the opponent, but 
we need to do what we need to do, and we need to get that Nissa out of our opponent's hand. Oh, prime time, but they're a little bit away from prime time. So yeah, let's just go ahead and take the Nissa. This is their hand, and we play another tap land. Our mana is not ideal, I will say. And Pest Infestation might be a card that goes straight into the sideboard. As it doesn't look like it's very good here. It is one of those cards that has like an incredible ceiling, but there are obviously instances where it doesn't do a whole lot. So, controversial card. Territorial Kavu, okay. They have a reanimate, nothing for the reanimate yet. We can kill the Kavu. Oh! Oh, wow. That was incredible. Fiery Covenant to kill Wall of Roots and Territorial Kavu? Yes. That is, that is awesome. Because what they could have done in the following turn is Territorial Kavu attack, discard Primeval Titan, and then cast Reanimate. But this just makes things a lot easier. So let's just uh, do this. Red, black, and then we can still pump the Evolved Sleeper here. Now, admittedly, we're not putting the most pressure on our opponent, but we are getting through all their resources. I, what do we take this over? I think it was Snuff Out. I think Snuff Out would have been pretty good here too, to be fair. I swear we will equip this GTA at some point. It's going to happen. But that's their hand now. They might need to just reanimate Wall of Roots or something. Or the Kavu, even. I'd prefer if they reanimate the Kavu, because I can Flame Slash it. Okay, well, I'm going to Flame Slash this, because this gives them three mana. Wait, no, I don't need to do that. I have a Jite. I have a Jite. So they are reanimating something. So we can just put the Jite onto the Deep Cavern Bat. What did they get? The Kavu? Okay. It's a juicy flame slash target. Yeah, so things are looking really good for us here. Let's just go ahead and flame slash the Kavu. And GTA the Bat. And attack. I guess, yeah, I guess we just attack here. Is there a better way to sequence that? I don't know. Fellows down. Like, did I need to flame slash? I could have turned this into a 3 3. Yeah, like, I mean, because they could have traded with the territorial Kavu. And I'd rather just have this in play. I mean, but they're down to Emrakul and Primeval Titan. So they need to find what? Like, Shallow Grave plus a way to discard Emrakul? Okay. Nice mid range battle there. They had Territorial Kavu, they had Rofelos, Wall of... I mean, they have a lot of, I think, Mana Dorks probably in their deck, so I think I am interested in some removal. This Pest Infestation doesn't seem especially good, so how about we bring in the Pyrokinesis? Not good against Wall of Roots, but I think it's still good enough. And then we can consider another card here if we want. I think I can cut Kari Zev on the draw. I'll just play Vindicate here. I think our mana is good enough to support this. That's a Mox Jet. That's a Mox Jet, folks. I like seeing Moxen in my opening hand. We got a fourth year Lingus here as well. So we're going to probably set up for a turn three fourth year Lingus. But yeah, this is great. We can go turn one. Ooh, Lanowar Elf turn one is also very nice. But we can go turn one Deep Cavern Bat, which is very good. All right, what, you, what, what do you have here? What is your most impactful play next turn? Ulamog. So they had, they're playing some kind of sneak attack through the breach type nonsense. Do I want to get Nissa or the Questing Beast is something they can play a turn sooner. So I'll just take the Questing Beast out of their hand. 
because it is quite painful for them to play the Nissa. And hopefully we can keep them off the Nissa by killing the Llanowar Elves. I do want to be able to go... Hmm. I can't GTA attack next turn. I can use the Oliphant to get a land. It's a wall of roots. Okay. Oh, wow. Three, four. Okay, so they can play Nissa next turn. Oof. They can play Nissa and like kill my... I mean, they can do all kinds of stuff with this Nissa. Yeah, another accelerate accelerant was not great for us. The thing is, if they play Nissa, I think they're just going to kill my Jitae. So I probably want to sandbag my Jitae. Although if they kill my Jitae, hold on, let's think here. So if I if I play Jitae, it's it's going to be like a bait, right? So if I play Jitae, so this is, this comes into play. This comes into play as um, next turn if they play it for five, it's going to come into play as three loyalty. Then they minus to kill my GTA. Then it's going to be at 2. And Wall of Roots is going to be down to an 4 And then I can play 4th Year Lingus. And then I can kill Nyssa by attacking both of my creatures into the Nyssa. And hit my opponent here. Oh, but I won't have the mana. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Because I had the Savai Triome here. And if I play GTA this turn, it doesn't quite get me there. I think we just put ourselves in a situation where if we draw a red or white source on tap, we get there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mountain cycle this. I'm gonna get the stomping ground because it allows me to play the tireless tracker. We'll play it. We'll play GTA. And if they play the Nissa, they play the Nissa. And look, getting even getting our Mox Jet killed is pretty bad for us. So I'm just gonna do this. Next turn, if we don't draw the land for the Eerlingus. We can play Tireless Tracker and then play the Triome. But yeah, this is going to be a problem. At least they take a lot of damage. I mean, they're going to kill the GT here, right? I think if they make a creature, that's really good for us. Well, it's still a 4-4. Four -four. It's still pretty annoying, to be fair. Yeah, but it's kind of a tough decision. Yep, they killed the GT. So we can get the Nissa down to one. And so then, like, the tokens they make aren't so big. It's not that bad. But let's just draw a white source here untapped. How, how awesome would that be? I suppose I could have gotten a plateau, but I just wanted to make sure that I can play the tracker here. So let's just go ahead and play tracker. Play the Triome. And hit Nissa. So they have an Ulamog and one unknown card in hand. And we can certainly, we can play a fourth year Lingus and basically kill the Nyssa if we want. Of course, it also depends on what else they play. Fast Bond we don't care about. Is that it? Okay. Okay. What do we do? We can even wait here, honestly, because I, I want my tracker to live. Although I guess I can always make my tracker live. Yeah, I think I'm just going to flame slash wall of roots and play a land and attack. And attack Nissa, that is. And then it's going to eat one of these tokens. So let's go ahead and flame slash wall of roots to just slow them down on their mana situation. And the tireless tracker is currently a four toughness creature so we're still fine probably going to get blocked by a horror token here and this also sets us up for a bigger fourth year lingus cold span dragon and uh, let's just wait just debating whether or not I want to crack the clue now or later. All right, but we're keeping this, the Nissa in check by getting them to kill the Jitae. The Nissa is just making two twos every turn, so it's not too bad. And this tireless tracker is continuing to grow. That is an Ulvenwald oddity, which might stay back. Feels like they're still going to make another two two here. Okay. 
We have a Goldspan Dragon and a fourth Yearlingus here. All right, cracking another clue. <laughs> Every time! Fire Covenant, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to play a Goldspan Dragon. We're going to attack our opponent. Wait, wait, let's first make sure fourth Yearlingus isn't enough to kill them. So fourth for four, this block's here. Okay, it doesn't kill them. So this is what we're going to do. Yeah, let's just... Oh my gosh, okay. Goldspan Dragon. Attack. We can't kill them, so I'm just interested in killing the Nissa here, right? So attack. Before blocks, we fire Covenant. This will kill the Nissa, and this will just attack them. Make a treasure. Before blocks, make two black. Wow, this fiery covenant was awesome. Four, two, four, two and one. How about that? <laughs> fiery covenant is a heck of a magic card, folks. Wow. Wow. Think we're good. Even if they cheat this into play and attack us, they're still dead. Nice. Fiery Covenant. MVP. Round two. Let's do this. No, we drew the Minskin Boo. I can't, I can't mulligan. All right, I'll mulligan. This hand is way worse. Doesn't have a Minskin Boo in it. All right, we'll uh, bottom the mountain. Done. And, hey, look, we're, we have a plan at least. It's Dores, Kari, Zev, and Jute. What you got? Do you, do you have that tension always when you play that turn one Dores? You're like, please, just don't miss. Like, I just... <sighs> wow. We missed. We super missed. We super missed. Okay. That's part of the game. That's magic. Sometimes you miss. All right. And their hand is great too. Turn one DRC. They have Fury, Skyclave Apparition. Really good. Really, really good against what we have. Why did I? I jinxed myself, right? Oh my oh, gosh. All right. Okay, opponent. Turn one DRC. Dragon's Rage Channeler. They're playing a Boros deck. At least we're going to be able to attack them. They do have the Skyclave Apparition, which makes me not want, which makes me not want to play the Gta. Gta on an empty board is also not that exciting. I suppose what's going to happen is they go Skyclave Apparition, exiling my Karizev, and then I Flame Slash that, and then I play my Gta. Right? That's kind of the order of operations here. Then we'll just play this bivouac. I know they have a wasteland, but if they play wasteland next turn, then they are not playing the apparition, which is fine. It might be tempting, to be honest. But then we're winning the damage back and forth if it if they don't have a two drop. It's like we take one, they take two. Or they take three. But it also depends on how important they think the white mana is in our deck. But we have an uphill battle, folks. We mulliganed, we cast a rest, we mulliganed again. And this is what we have. Already thinking about my sideboard though, we have plenty of options against Red White. We have Damnation, Pyrokinesis, Lelia. Interesting. Okay. I see. And they played the Wasteland. Well, they can't play that. Wow. Okay. So we can Flame Slash the Lelia. We have another play. Ooh, Minskin Boo, but no green mana. No green mana. I mean, I kind of do want to kill the Lelia. Let's just kill Lelia. Let's attack. Mox would have been a nice draw, I guess.
Yeah, and I'm still going to just hold on to this GTA. I think this still has the potential to do more work than just this Karizev that's in play. I think they have a really great... Um, they have a really great play next turn, though, which is... Oh, never mind. They can just play Fury this turn. That's really good. Well, I, no, they might not have a second red source. But they just played Mox Jet, which allows them to get a step ahead on mana. But I was just thinking they go... Okay, so they played the second plane. So they're going to go Apparition, Wasteland, my Bivouac, which is a very good turn for them. The Dragon's Rage Chandler is... There's only two card types in the yard for now. Fiery Covenant would be nice. Evolve Sleeper, and now we just play out the GTA. And we know that they have a Fury in hand, and they drew the mountain. Okay, we are in trouble, folks. We need Fiery Covenant. Fiery Covenant. We take 3, we go to 12. And then we take 6 damage to Fiery Covenant. Alright, that's, that's the out here. Hmm. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. That's probably not good enough, but I'll play it. Jeez. Okay. They no, they have a great, great deck. They probably have some number of duels as well. Their mana is not ideal with the wasteland, but I'm sure they have. Plateau, Sacred Foundries, Inspiring Vantages. Oh yeah, they already showed us an Inspiring Vantage. How, and they have Mana Crypt and Mox Jet. Woo! Spicy, spicy deck. We are boarding this Duress out. We are taking all of this damage, I think. Yep. And we are probably just dead. Yeah, we're dead. All right. Sideboard. We have a sideboard, right? Pyrokinesis, Embercleave. Oh, not Embercleave. What am I saying? Damnation. Batter Skull? How deep do I want to get with this? Did Were there good targets for Pest Infestation? I don't think so. Am I just boarding this out every game? Am I valuing this too highly? We got duress. Contagion is probably good. <laughs> we're just we're boarding into control here, folks. We're boarding into control, and just win with wh whatever last last permanent standing is what we win with. There's also these as options too. Arizev. I do like the idea of taking out more cheap creatures because we have Damnation in. So I'm not sure if I should play the Bat as well. Maybe the Bat's also something that can go. Oh, cur Currency Converter also seems pretty slow. So I think we just go big. Alright, we'll just, we'll, we'll try this. How good is this GTA now that we've taken out a lot of creatures? It, it's nice just because if you if I do put myself into a situation where the GTA connects, it's really, really good. But perhaps I don't have enough cheap creatures to make it worth worthwhile. Oh, what am I... Oh my gosh. I just realized something, folks. Yeah, there, we saw a jet and crypt and I boarded out Pest Infestation. What on earth was I thinking? Could have just been the Spaleful Mastery or something. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the robber doesn't steal anything just yet. Okay, so they missed out on a land drop. If only we had a way to kill this jet. Oh well.
I am interested in using Baleful Mastery to just kill something, but I don't want them to draw a card. I can go end of turn though, because I kind of want this Minskin Boo to stay in play. I see. I just really don't want them to draw a card, but let's just do it. This is why I don't really like this card. Oh, they didn't draw a land. How lucky. <laughs> How lucky are we? Um, yep, it's time to Minskin Boo. Minskin Boo with Jite. We have Glorybringer to follow that up too. Yes, yes, I would like that. Now, they can go Creature, Copter, Attack, and also sack the Pyrite Spellbomb, but that would require them to have, like, land, one drop, and then Spellbomb or something, or two drop, I guess. And even if they kill Minskin Boo, I do have this Hamster with the Jite. Probably cracking the spell bomb just to find a land. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really dislike this card. I probably am just not going to play it. I'll just replace it with uh, Pest Infestation. Okay. And Breath Shield Breaker. Maybe I board out the GTA because of that. How many other artifacts do I have? I guess I'll have to take a look. Interesting that they chose not to attack my Minsk by playing Thraben Inspector. Huh. Cole against Command, what a draw. Attack. Do I exert? No, I just want to attack. I mean, they're, they're at five. They have to deal, deal with a 7-7 seven, seven boo token, Minsk. And also Glorybringer, and I have Coligan's Command in my hand. So things are still looking very good here for me. But yeah, I don't mind the idea of boarding out the GTIP because I wasn't sure how good this was anyways. And since we took out the Converter, I don't think we have any other artifacts. I know we were considering, though, the Coalition Relic, but I guess with this, we just shouldn't. And then we just go minus one GTA plus one Pest Infestation. All right, our opponent has Strip Mine and Wasteland. I might also just want to board in another land. Alright, Copter is crude. We cannot do anything. They're attacking me? Is this me? Okay. What if they cast Wrath? Uh, that's not enough either. Alright, there's a Sacred Foundry, yep. Yeah, Strip Mine, Wasteland, all the red-white duels, Copter. Great deck, great deck. Our opponent just got, just kept a two mana source hand and couldn't find land basically for this one. But we'll take it, we'll take it. Parallax wave. Parallax wave. That was extremely good, wow. Okay. Probably one of the only cards to get them out of this spot to be honest. Jeez, Parallax Wave. Yep. Wow. Best Parallax Wave in the history of Parallax Waves. I guess we get this Glorybringer back eventually. So now Minsk and Boo goes down? Jeez. They have a Caracas too? Wow, they might actually get us here. That is that is wild. All right, so what do I do? I am going to attempt to kill Smuggler's Copter. If I get the Glory Bringer, oh no, I can. What if I just get them to three? Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's just deal two damage to them, because then I can I can sack my Glory Bringer and just fling right. Let's just double check here. When you do deals damage change it where exit that creature's power. Okay. So yeah, artifact and two to you. 
If they save this with the wave, we get the glory bringer back next turn, which is good. But I think getting them to a low enough life total where if I draw a three power creature with the Minsk that can kill them, that's pretty good. We even have damnation mana. If that's what they choose to do. Oh, goodness. Okay. That is great. And they're going to strip us too? No. Vampiric Tutor's got to be awesome. <laughs> oh, man. But what if we just Wrath here? If we Wrath, we just get a 4 4. And then if they wave that away, if they wave that away, we get a Glory Bringer, which they need to find an answer for as well. Or maybe I just wait a turn so that the Parallax Wave just does what it needs to. I think I'll just hold off on Damnation and wait a turn. They're probably going to go after our Triome here, anyways. Although I feel like they should have used it there unless they have something big to play. Although the only downside here is if they do go for my Triome with the Strip Mine, I can't cast Damnation. Yeah. Let's just hope they can't reset the Parallax Wave. If they reset the Parallax Wave, we're in a lot of trouble. Red, red, black. Is this Goldspan Dragon? Could be. I mean, I'm just going to vamp for... I'm just going to vamp for Goldspan Dragon, right? I don't think I have a Chain Lightning in my deck. I think we pass one in the draft. Oh, I can also get 4th Yearlingus. That's probably just better. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Goldspan. Good. Attack with Goldspan. Maybe keep this back. I don't know. Okay. They're at three. They can use the treasure to play the shield breaker too as an extra blocker. A lot of different directions we can go with this. We can also... Well, we can't kill the wave because we don't have a pest infestation. But honestly, if we just go Vampiric Tutor, or Theorlingus, that, sh that should be enough. But let's look. Is there just a straight up I kill you spell? Uh, that's fourth year lingus all the way. Even if they, no, they can't strip us. So we just do this for four. Yeah. Like even if they kill one of these. Yeah. All right. Feels great. Okay, so they got us that last game. Now we're going to definitely bring in Pest Infestation. No, we have too many artifacts still. I guess we can take out the Batter Skull and just board in like random 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. But the thing is we need to play the Jet no matter what. It's okay. It's still okay to just try to minimize on it. And if we get the Jet, we'll get at least one use out of it. But I don't have anything here else. Any, I don't have anything else that I'd like to play, and I certainly don't want to cut the jet. So let's uh, let's try this. All right, this is a bit of a slow hand, but I, Coligan's command I think is so good in this matchup that I'm going to keep. But turn one mana crypt is rough. Turn one mana crypt is definitely rough for us. It's a pyrokinesis, which is not bad. I think I'm going to lead with the crypt. And then next turn we'll play the fast lands. Aggro decks with power almost feels more unfair than just like a regular deck with power. Just being able to play your two or three drop turn one. It's so incredible. Just play like a dragon's rage. Oh my gosh. Are you... That's not reasonable. Play a dragon's rage channeler at least. What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fourth year Lingus. Oh, showdown at the Skulls. Sure. All right. That is a heck of a start there, folks. And look at this. They get to play one of these next turn, I guess. Oh, gut is just going to be so silly, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, this is certainly a start. So I think the most likely thing they do... Is this a warrior? No. 
given that they don't have another red source, because they can only play it next turn, right? So they can play one spell next turn. So it's going to be either I, I, yeah. So I think, I think I actually. Oh, I uh, pyrokinesis is an instant. No, that's good. Okay, no, I'm I'm good for now, because I can pyrokinesis if they play the gut. I mean, we are gi gigantic dogs here. And maybe I should have just kinesis anyways. Now the question is, do I want Fable or do I want Coligan's Command? Because I'm definitely pyrokinesising this turn. I think they're going to want to play Gut though here. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Okay, so I can I can kill the Karizev and then I can cast this Shield Edict. Coligan's Command is quite good as it kills Mana Crypt plus the Restless Bivouac. I don't know if I'm going to get the opportunity to do that, though. They might just attack us with the bivouac. Fable draws us out of stuff, though. Yeah, let's just... I think we need the Fable, probably. All right, Guts in. No other plays, hopefully. And then, so now those are gone. Thought Seize, nope. I need to most definitely edict them. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. Alright. We're obviously dead to any number of things. Yep. Lelia is awesome. But yeah, this... They have a very, very good Boros deck. Like, Boros deck with all the power cards is just so, so good. Alright, well... Just play Fable. They're going to be able to get another card off the Lelia. I think they found a Caracas last turn, but this will allow us to at least try to find a removal. Sp oh, I can't even kill the Lelia. They have Caracas. Goodness. Okay. Operation Mana Crypt died. I hope my opponent dies to Mana Crypt. Jetmir Garden. Okay, so just constant. This Lelia is so good. I love Lelia. Lelia or Inti? What do you like? White, white, red, Skyclave Apparition on Fable, probably. Yep, that was kind of how we were supposed to get out of this. Fighter Covenant. Doesn't work, really. Well, I suppose we can kill the Skyclave Apparition. But the problem is, they can put a counter on the Lelia with the Bivouac. Do we thought seize them? Sure. We can't miss on this one, right? Got a solid two. That was a good hit, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Oh, oh, I can do that. If they activate activate the bivouac at the beginning of combat, I can kill both the apparition and the bivouac, go down to four, and we'll have a three three and a two two against a potential five five Lelia. So and we'll we will be at a very low life total. But it's our only play. And if I'm the opponent, it makes a lot of sense to just activate Bivouac and just get in there. Yep. We'll go to beginning combat. And two and two. Okay, done. Okay. Hey, I, I, all I'm gonna say is, even if we lose, even if we lose, we put up a pretty good fight, despite this start, right? Despite this start, we put up a pretty good fight. Well, they can't play that at least. In, in before Black Lotus. Okay. They might bounce it. Okay, they're trading it. Okay. They need, oh, and they have the second red for the gold span, so I need an instant speed removal spell for gold span dragon. 
Okay, or we die. Instant speed removal? Nope. Yep, they just cast gold span and they will kill us. Yeah. We fought the good fight fight, folks. We tried our best, but they got a lot of extra mileage out of the moxin that they had. Oh wait, what am I saying? They can't the gold span dragon was off the Lelia. Okay. No, we uh, I thought we were dead. You know what? I almost conceded. <laughs> okay. Uh we don't have any oh uh, we can draw pest infestation. So let's cycle here. Okay. I mean, they could just miss, right? And just take a bunch of damage off a of crypt. That's the hope. We need them to miss. Oh my gosh, if we come back from this. Miss. No creature. No, it's a creature. Ah. Darn! Look, we just had to try to get a little lucky here. How, how can we come back from this now? I, I guess it's still it's still pest infestation, but we can't draw cards off the Evolve Sleeper anymore. And they get to loot here too. That's really bad for us. So we need pest infestation. Pest infestation. The thing is, they have three card types as well. So if I pest infestation and kill the copter, then I just die to the Dragon's Rage Channeler. They have one card, they pitch Sacred Foundry. Okay, all right, you got us now. Copter gets us, oh well. That was a good fight though, good fight. Okay, round number three. Our opponent bringing the good vibes only, apparently. I'm in for that. I'm in for only good vibes, that's nice. Luda Delta. Our hand of Vampiric Tutor. We have the Fire Covenant. I kind of really want a green source, but it does feel bad vamping for a forest. I'll do it if I have to. But we don't have to do it until turn two, probably. And allow ourselves to naturally draw lands. All right, so they're playing Spire Buff Canal, Aether Spell Bomb. This might be an artifact deck. It might just be a control deck. We'll see. Pest Infestation, probably going to be pretty decent if they're playing Aether Spellbomb. Ooh, that's very good. Okay. Yeah. I'm still kind of holding off on the Vampiric Tutor until I figure out what I need. I could have gotten a Mox, but I didn't, I didn't have anything to play. I did find a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, though, and they have... They fetch for a Ketria Triome here off the Delta, so blue, green, black, red mana available, so. I wonder if they counter my vamp. Let's still just draw here. Look, if they have a counter, they have a counter. And yeah, they're paying something. They're paying. Okay, force of negation, sure. Yeah, I could have tried to bait a counter with this vamp. I'm still not really sure what I want to get. I kind of want to get Minskin Boo once I find the green source. But if I don't, that's the problem now is if I don't. Okay, they're cycling here. I think I still basically just wait until, until I see what kind of mana I draw before making a decision. I don't really want to get a forest because I don't want to play. What just happened? Oh, they're a Lurus deck. I see. Okay. Uh, then I might want to just get Thoughtseize. Lurus is kind of problematic. It does really slow us down though. But I really don't want Lurus to come into play. They can go Lurus Spellbomb. Also just curious what they're working with here. They use Force of Negation. I suppose they could also have Force of Will. Oh my gosh, they also have Force of Will. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Okay. If they play another land next... If they play a land next turn, it's going to be so difficult. Because... 
we cannot f yeah oh it looks like they're not going to play a land though that's good so if they play the spell bomb here we can still fire covenant the Luris, unless they sandbag the island okay Let's see if we draw a okay i'm gonna do that uh which one is it lock the wing scorn or i'm gonna do this just so i don't get dazed there's no other free counters you can play it's dead all right No Luris for you. All right, so nice controlling Luris deck. Wonder, but if they want to win, they probably just have a bunch of little dorks to win with. So Fire Covenant is still probably fine. Definitely need a dual land of some sort. Helm of Awakening. Are they? Are they comp? Oh, they might be combo Luris. Interesting. Do I kill it? I can Pest Infestation for two. The way I look at it is if somebody plays Helm of Awakening like this, like they're setting up for something big. And as much as I want to just beat them down, all right. I mean, they can cycle this, but like I said, I just want to make sure the board's clear. They cycle this. And I don't want them to go off with this Helm of Awakening, which it looks like it's really good for us too. But again, they, they might be just trying to storm us, play some time spirals, etc. So I just want to get this off the battlefield. <laughs> okay. Draw seven incoming. Yeah, let's, let's embark and discard your hand and draw seven. Yes. They can't have any more free free uh, counters, which is good. And now we get the spell bomb. They can't even use the spell bomb. Oh, they also had pest infestation. Okay. I wonder if I should play this jet. They already discarded their infestation. Next turn we can go Mox, Goldspan Dragon, attack, and then play uh, Deep Cavern Bat. But we could also be dead here. Our opponent could be could have it, depending on what they drew off Salem to the West. This feels like they have. Underworld Breach into Brain Freeze. They, they also have Frantic Search, so don't find the Breach. Don't play the Breach. Okay, that's a Jace. I'm okay with the Jace. I mean, Jace is still good, don't get me wrong. I guess I just don't randomly want to get dazed out of the tournament. So yeah, let's just play Goldspan. Snap. Okay. Yep, they're definitely they're definitely looking to combo us out. Oh man. But not too much we can do. Just completely depends on what they find. Didn't find a way to kill the Jace, which is unfortunate. And now we're just gonna go ahead and fire off this deep cavern bat. But they can just flip Jace and snap it to continue trying to go off. Yeah, with the snap in the graveyard, doesn't really matter. But I guess that prevents them from casting another spell out of the graveyard. What is this? Coligan's command, getting back Luris. Okay. Yeah, Col ways to get back the Luris is obviously very good. And let's take a look at their hand, though. Wow. Okay, so their hand is pretty bad. I can't take it and that's it for us but remember they can play j they can flip the jace and cast any number of cards from their graveyard so they can also go luris maybe play ether spell bomb luris ether spell bomb is a very nice combination and they can just keep the gold span dragon in check by constantly by constantly bouncing it and it actually prevents me from actually even making treasures. And I really want a white source here for fourth year Lingus. I think that's probably how we're going to try to finish off the game here. So white source would be nice. I might be interested in just playing the Blood Tithe Harvester because they're going to have Luris plus. Brainstorm, okay. I mean, they have to be really close to being able to combo us off here. Like Luris and Underworld Breach make a nice combination. 
So I think that's just what they're digging for right now. Bloodstained Mire, Blood Crypt, always a bad sign when they're taking damage. Breach, okay. They can cast Frantic Search out of the graveyard. Many, many times, they had, their graveyard is gigantic. So if they just go, search, search, search. Do we have an Eldrazi? I don't know that we drafted one. Hey, but a super sweet deck from the opponent. We're not especially good at pressuring the opposition. Ooh, they have Echo of Eons as well here. Mind Twist, okay. They have Helm of Awakening. I'm just wondering how good my Pest Infestation is. Obviously, it's not good against Breach. Maybe they just don't have Brain Freeze. That's, <laughs> that, that's the other hope. But there's just no shot, right, with the with the breach. I mean, they can win any number of ways. If they draw, like, most of their deck and then have Thassa's Oracle, that's also something they can do. Okay, Frantic Search. Pitching top. I assume I'm dead, but it's just good to know all the threats that they can play in their, great, in their deck. Black Lotus. Came out of nowhere. Black Lotus Lurus. Oh, my gosh. This deck is... This deck is really nice. I mean, we have Mind Twist, Echo of Eons, Loris, Black Lotus going. Sure. Okay. Our opponent passed the vibe check. They've got a sweet one here. What is this? This is a lot of mana. And they're not just replaying the Lotus a bunch of times. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, this tells me though that maybe they just don't have brain freeze they're just i mean it's breach is still incredible here but they're not going for the um the deterministic win this turn yeah they shrunk my thing because i mean they could be playing more stuff if they want right why not you could draw your whole deck if you'd like with the frantic search. There's a lotus, a bobble. Breach is in play. If I draw land, I can just jam virtue. Maybe that does something. Oh, there, <laughs> there's the black lotus. What's the storm count at? Wow, that was it. I mean, it was good. Look, okay, I, I, I shouldn't be. Okay, that was good. Okay, that, that was legitimately good. Okay. I mean, okay, here you go. What is in your hand? An island, sure. Everybody attack Jace. That way if Jace minuses, it's, it'll die. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, they can, um, they can Pest Infestation for a gazillion this turn, right? Kill my Mox. So I guess that's what they're going to do. Do we have Fiery Covenant? No, we used it already. I wonder if Virtue is still going to be good enough here. Dead Jet. Probably not. All right, you got me. How do we sideboard here? We probably just want to take out most of our removal and just try to kill them. Re I like Revoker. You just Revoker Black Lotus. Flame Slash maybe. There's Flame Slash, Fiery Covenant, Virtue as removal spells. There's Ember Cleave just to try to finish the game. There's Vindicate. Vindicate's nice just because it can get other various permanents over something like a Flame Slash. Gonna try to get a more curvy draw and beat them down that way. Okay, our opponent has a very sweet Luris deck. And this, okay. Yes, we'll keep this and bottom, I don't know, I kinda want my lands. Is that crazy? Yeah, it's probably good to just bottom a swamp. I'm curious what to revoke her. It's like Lotus? 
That's the scariest card. There's also Sensei's Divining Top. But I think it's just Black Lotus. I think that's kind of how we lose a lot of games. So let's just name Black Lotus. Black Lotus. No Black Lotus shenanigans for you until you kill this Revoker. Lotus. They have all the Lotuses. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. All right. We saw almost our whole deck and we didn't see days, so I think that's fine. They did have Force of Negation and Force of Will, which is pretty sick. Put Luris into hand, okay. They could have Force. Let's go for it. Their deck is so good. I mean, they have Force of Negation too, but I just feel like we mulligan, they have the Luris, like we just need to try to get there here, but given that they're paused here, I mean, they're going to have to counter this, I'm pretty sure. They exile sail into the west. I mean, the alternative was playing the Rampaging Raptor, I guess. All right, untap land, I guess. Untap land would be good. That's rough, okay. Well, gotta do what we gotta do. Mountain cycle. Let's get a plateau. By getting a plat, so we have, do we have many double black cards? By getting plateau, we can activate our restless bivouac, which I think is pretty good. And we can still play the, the raptor this turn. So let's go plateau. And beat down. Next turn, we do have Glorybringer. And if they don't have anything, then we can go Glorybringer, kill Luris. Just note that they do have a, a better blue spell in hand, most likely, as they did exile Sail into the West. That's an Echo of Eons. They could Echo of Eons. Two mana. Okay, brainstorm on the stack. Okay, three mana. What can you be? Black, black, red. Coligan's command and discard a card. Come on. Ah, uh, that's such a beating. All right. Spell bomb, seal of. Yeah, okay. We need to top deck. Um, let's do this. I guess. Just put a counter on the bivouac. Raptor down, three damage in, and we play Converter. Yeah. Big fan of our opponent's deck, a lot of good cheap interaction. Seal of Removal, not normally a card you play often, but with Luris, it's quite good. And the free counters were, were really solid as well. And now they're gonna cast Coligan's Command, kill the Converter, make me discard. The Raptor. Yep, and they are dismantling us very, very handily. I think our deck was actually pretty solid, but this combination is going to be really hard to beat. It's like build your own Caracas too with the protecting your Loris, your Loris rather.
Activate. Fight the good fight. Attack Jace. <laughs> Return back to my hand. Yeah, I mean, we, we, if, by them just constantly casting the seal, we're basically locked out here. So, if I don't draw an action spell here, I think that's just going to be it for me. Yep. All right. GG's. Can't win them all, unfortunately. I think we ended up drafting a fairly solid mid-range deck, but I think they, they had a very, very fun, cool Lurus build that I'd like to draft one time as well. We've, we've kind of built the fairer end of the spectrum for Lurus, but they're definitely almost like a Lurus combo deck. It's, it was pretty awesome to see. But taking a look at this deck, I mean, we had good hand disruption. We had a reasonable suite of removal spells to interact with what our opponents were trying to do. We had some great threats in the Minsk and Boo and some of the dragons. We had the fourth year Lingus as well. I just, sometimes the matches just don't go your way and, uh, and you lose and it's okay. So this was it. This wasn't the full five colors this time. We had, we had just, just the four, just the four, but I think I was still pretty happy with this deck. Nice four color mid range strategy, but, um, I think I want to try to mix it up sometime soon and see if we can draft, uh, something other than a four or five color pile. Maybe we can try to draft the combo deck in the near future, but of course we have to let the draft come to us. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button for more daily uploads just like this. I'll catch you next time.